for that. Welcome to the first ever episode of Bobby and the Wolf with me, Nick Matthew, and my main man, Bobby the Dazzle, Daryl Selby. Welcome, Daz. Good to see you, mate. It's How's been a little while, a lot of planning. Yeah, how's things been going? You coping? You're not wanting to kill the kids just yet? Yeah, some days harder than others, but uh, trying to trying to just keep a sane mind. Um, yeah, like it's you know difficult for a lot of people, and uh, you know we just just have to crack on with what we're doing and try and make the most of it. You know, it's nice to be at home for a little bit of time. Uh, trying trying to do a few just to um, you know inspire inspire a few kids out there and keep um, keep everyone active and, and practicing and doing bits and pieces actually like, really nice when when I do one and then loads of people send me their own versions of it on, on social media that's like real nice buzz for me to see like the kids at home like giving it a go and trying some amazing trick shots I'm blaming you for the toilet paper shortage to be honest but <laughs> yeah that was that was um I don't know where I came up with that idea from I don't know why I thought ball would fit nicely into that as a target but um, I think I was rejoicing at the time about finally getting some toilet roll. So I was just showing, <laughs> showing off of it. Loads of people started messaging me at that time, sort of saying, like, stop showing off for the toilet roll, all right? So what we got? First episode. I'm excited. We've got right, for some lineup. Lineup. Unbelievable lineup. Unbelievable lineup. Um, yeah. Well, I mean, would you, do, you want to, do you want to introduce the guests? Or do yeah. you want to let people know what we've got coming up in the show? Episode one, we're looking at rivalries. So big rivalry over 20 years now, two decades of rivalries between England and France, James Wilstrop and Gregory Goltier. I mean, how's that for a first couple of guests? They're going to be opening up about what they've done during lockdown, going to have a little go at Bobby's quiz. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, And of course, PSA have been doing their rallies of the decade recently, which has been... Uh, you managed to sneak in there in the top ten. Um, Number ten, actually, and that was ten. Yeah, um, not surprised. Well, yeah, they but they featured both twice in that, so we're going to have a talk through some of their best rallies of their career, and yeah, it's just going to be good to catch up with those two absolute legends. So many world, the Greg uh, world champion, yeah. three times French yeah. Open. Both world number ones, James Commonwealth, James Commonwealth gold, games gold medalist. You know, amazing career. Uh, the pair of them Nick I just want to ask you a question actually what's your most memorable match with both of them I think James was the 2010 Canary Wharf semi-final that was a crazy match both of them I actually had one match with each of them that went over two hours and I I think it was the most memorable because I think I only had four or five matches over two hours in my whole career so I had one week one with James in Canary Wharf 2010 and we pretty much brought each other to a standstill. Um, James went down with cramp on match ball and I was close. I remember I was twitching my hamstring. I'd gone into that front backhand corner for his backhand drop so many times that my hamstring was just about to seize and that was an unreal match. Um, Greg was the England-France, that world team's, I think it was 2013 in Malouz. Oh. It was, there was about 3,000 yeah. people 2,998 of them were French and the atmosphere was pretty raucous and I just snuck him again. We both pretty much cramped in the fifth. Only two times in my career where I've been close to cramping or cramped and yeah, snuck that one and it was just that. I mean, you played in that match. That one was pretty, pretty amazing. Yeah. Yeah. That was, uh, watching, watching that was amazing match. Emotionally pretty draining considering that I was meant to be playing. Um, later on that night so I was glad I didn't really, thankfully you won and Jimbo beat Thierry so um, that was that was phenomenal and never seen you jump so high when you won that picture of you um, I great picture. I don't know you probably got it on my, you, you should you should have it on there I know I've put them up since we last spoke haven't I just to try yeah. and, I read this article about what how to zoom and it was all about having a good backdrop <laughs> the other thing <laughs> that they said was try and have a tidy office where you work I can see you've taken that one to heart <laughs> I'm actually the worrying thing is I have actually tidied up a bit <laughs> who, who said that where are you getting this information from um Pierce Morgan I think worryingly no I'm kidding <laughs> don't trust any information don't you don't get trust from any information from there so yeah episode one without further ado we'll get 
Greg and James into the uh, Beard and Wolf's Den. Ready to go. All right, fellas, welcome to our first episode. Great to see you both. Hello. Hello. How's lockdown <laughs> been keeping you? Apart from not being able to get haircuts and things, you both just come from training sessions, keeping well? Uh, yeah, all good. Uh, yeah, just finished a yoga session. So trying to maintain uh, uh, my form, stay in uh, good shape uh, and uh, waiting for the opportunity to play squash again. <laughs> Uh, as a six pack solid yeah i'm, I'm still uh, i'm still okay you know i, I didn't put on weight much so <laughs> i did one of the great yeah, four yeah. sessions in mauritius like two years ago i'm still recovering <laughs> these core <laughs> sessions are brutal yeah i do quite uh, yeah like two, two every two days i do like one hour core abs so yeah yeah <laughs> one hour non-stop man <laughs> <laughs> I remember about that james yeah, good, good. Yeah, I'm, I'll never be able to do one hour core, but um, it's been it's been good. You know, it's nice to do some different things and you know train a little bit differently and be at home. I mean, it's been horrendous for so many people, obviously. But um, there's, I don't know for us. I, I kind of feel like it's been there's been a lot of positives, really. You know, speaking honestly, it's um, you know quite quite been quite nice to not travel a little bit and stay at home. Enjoyed those aspects of it bit of family time as well that was going to be my first question what are you kind of enjoying the most about this your choose to be in this situation what you're enjoying the most that family time or definitely yeah. i mean obviously as you know well as all all of us know you know it's just challenging it's challenging isn't it, to uh, look after young kids but it's just been it's just been fantastic to, to get that time with them where you're not you're not having to be somewhere or you know there's always something to do in our lives as squash players isn't there so to to spend some time we're doing a few our, my old ones getting into the workouts um nice. we've been training a bit together we did one of yours actually oh, the yeah. one where you were um <laughs> slagging me off about the he enjoyed it when you slagged me off about the floors um oh. but, uh, <laughs> about the sweaty floors you didn't yeah know. yeah but, it, but it's yeah but it's been great and we've you know we've been ch checking out all those things and, and you know training in different ways and uh, you know so it's been good it's been good yeah, on my side, it's slightly different because uh, I missed the tour for like uh, 14, 15 months. Of course. So uh, I was with my family uh, all the time last year during my rehab. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I was looking forward to play again and be back on the circuit and uh, uh, see all the people again and enjoy playing again. So it was kind of a, of a brutal moment to suddenly stop, you know, and uh, have to wait for another, I don't know, like, four, five, six, seven months, who knows now. Uh, but at the end of the day, you know, I enjoy uh, being home with my family. Uh, as James says, you know, uh, we adapt, you know, our training. Uh, uh, everybody has to adapt depending on uh, the kind of tools they have. So luckily at home, I've got like a, a little gym with bike and a squat rack and some weights, some uh, like a bossu, so I can you know, uh, do uh, some good workout and maintain, like, uh, try to regain my uh, muscle mass, especially for my leg, because after a year of being out, uh, I lost uh, a lot of uh, a lot uh, a lot of muscle. So it's it's important to uh, uh, regain uh, uh, muscle in my leg and and confidence, even for my future for after squash. You know, I want to be able to 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 run and walk properly and have no difficulties going up and down the stairs. So. I try to build up, you know, uh, again, you know, the things I, I couldn't, you know, because I came back on the, like in January or December or January and uh, and I wasn't like fully, like I was ready to play, but not f like 100% with my, my leg and my knee. So I used that, that, that time to, uh, to do, to keep on uh, uh, rebuilding, you know, my, my strength with my legs. So that's the, I take it as a positive sign, you know, like, to do that you know well you've been you've been active on that you only went on social media about a year ago after so many years but you've been pretty active james less so james keeps a lower profile on the social media side of things really <laughs> yeah i didn't even know what social media was a year ago i found out by uh, by accident you know that uh, on my phone 
<laughs> no, yeah. Well, uh, now now we are at home. You know, we maybe use social media a bit more. You know, to uh, to stay informed of what uh, others do, uh, and uh, to or, or, uh, and to also share our uh, lifestyle too. So I think it's it's good. You know that way. James is gonna come back and he's gonna be a bodybuilder, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are you missing we don't know. in lockdown, fellas? James, you're missing your trips to the coffee shop. Uh, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Um, God, I don't mean. I guess you know. I, I guess it's. I guess it's. I don't know. It's people, isn't it? Really, I think. Um, you know, just uh, that it's, it is strange. But now you sort you sort of six weeks in. You, you kind of get your routine, don't you? And you get used to it. But I don't know. I don't know. I mean, obviously, just the, the simple things, like you say, is we, we sort of rode, got on the bike and rode through through town the other day. And you look at the places that you, in your daily life you get so used to doing. You know, you go to the shops, or especially with kids, you try and vary. You go into the park and all those little little nice things that you do together. You're missing those. But on the other hand of that, you get to you just live your life in a different way and. Everybody's talking about how they've slowed down a little bit, and um, you know you've got to just try different things. I think, I think the great thing is just this thing of like training in a slightly different way. In terms of you know talking about it professionally for a second and squash wise, it's um, you know just just giving you sort of a, you, you do look at different people's videos. You know we are we are taking forty minutes to do this and listening to Greg's point of view, and I think you open your mind up a little bit more during this period just to listen to people a bit and maybe entertain new ideas i think that's quite a healthy thing and you've got a little bit more time to do that so yeah you, you do miss a lot but i think you, you just you, you're getting quite a lot of pluses as well i'm trying to be positive about it <laughs> um, there's a lot of negativity and there's a lot of sadness about but it's you just got to try and turn it into positives i think and you as much as you can yeah i think we need to try to uh... We always have to adapt, you know, during our career, there was up and downs and there was always a way to, you know, to come back up and find solution to rebound. So it's a situation where, uh, where uh, we have to uh, find solution for uh, and, and de deal with the situation right now. So we try to maintain our shape. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, I think, you know, the taste of uh, the day we're going to be able to eat few balls is going to be like... Uh, Great. So uh, I think for me it's the same uh, same uh, deal as when I was uh, injured. You know, like uh, the day I could play again, it was like pure satisfaction. And I think, uh, uh, yeah, we ju we have to be patient. And uh, uh, maybe it's a lesson of life too. I was talking to some friends recently, and and sometimes we we maybe have too much. So uh, you know, like, and, and we kind of. Uh, not always enjoy moments and maybe you know the little things that we're gonna have again you know maybe we're gonna have to enjoy we're gonna enjoy mo a, a bit more you know what i mean yeah definitely i think yeah. so no yeah. daryl you've got a couple of bones to pick with these two haven't you about their junior days and stuff um but i just wanted to talk a little bit about your rivalry together and I remember you two playing each other for the first time. Well, the first time I saw it, at least, was the under-17 British Junior Open final, Abbeydale at Sheffield. And I think it was 12-10 in the fifth. I think Greg won in 99. James, you then won the year after the under-17s. Greg, you then won the under-19s a year after that. And James, the under-19s a year after that. So you two have been pretty much neck and neck for 20 years now. It's pretty crazy. Um, but, yeah, Daryl, you've got a little bone to speak about the junior career. They didn't really help you out too much there, did they? Oh, no, absolute stitch-up getting born the same sort of years as these two. <laughs> like, I remember playing Greg in a uh, European under-19 semi-final. Uh, lost, uh, lost to James, I think, in the British Junior Open semi-final under-19. So I just kept coming third all the time. And, and at the time, I was like, who are these two guys? I just can't beat them ever. And then, um, obviously, both world number world number ones in the future. So, yeah, junior junior career was fun. Obviously, made me a lot better. But for you two, I mean, it it's must have been always coming up against the same same players. You know, I think it happens all the way through. But you guys, as Nick said, been playing for like twenty years plus. Um, How does it feel like now? 
play against each other compared with with back then, and uh, you know what's what sort of changed or what's the same. Um, yeah, I mean, yes, yeah, it's, it's funny. We, we played before Christmas, didn't we? And it felt bloody awful, to be honest. I didn't, I didn't really, <laughs> uh, didn't really get a look in. He, he played, um, he played, he played very, very well in that that last match. And obviously, that's the last, the last one we've had. Which, yeah, it's, it's it, I, I often do find it is unbelievable, isn't it? When you sort of twenty years down the line, you're still, still going at it. But it's, uh, it's yeah. I mean, I do remember. Yeah, I remember that. Ma- I think I remember the match you were talking about, Nick. It was it was hard. It was tough, and we had a lot. You know, there was a lot of respect going on, and it was, it was a really good match for two young juniors. And um, still got a few photos of it. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's. I think we've, we've all. We've, there's lots of these little rivalries going on, isn't there? And Nick and, and Greg's was was similar, and uh, goes back goes back a long way as well. But I think you sort of come away from it after 20 years, just thinking, well, I don't know, it's a, it's a great thing. You've had your ups and downs. You've had some very tough moments playing and competing together, but you've gone into those very difficult situations. You've kind of shared it in a way. And um, at the end of it, you, you try and look back on it and there were rough patches and smooth patches and you try and just you sort of reflect on it and think, well, we gave it everything we could and we enjoyed those moments in front of a lot of people. and produce some great squash entertain people and you know I, I think of a rival with Greg's you know with an awful lot of um you know positivity and, and affection and I enjoyed the battles we had so um yeah it's all, all good for me. Well, was always good Greg is there any what was your best memory of playing James what do you think is the best match you got yeah that? I remember that uh, British Open uh, that uh, that match we played under 17 uh, and I think Nick, you won. Uh, you won that one. Uh, Bengi, was, Bengi pulled out. Yeah, I was. That's the reason I was able to sit and watch. I was sitting there watching like that with uh, beer in my hand. I remember. That's why he was keen to bring it up. Yeah, Bengi yeah. got food poisoning, so I was able to actually watch. I was yeah. due to be on next or whatever, but I, I could actually sit and watch. And I was like, "Whoa, I'm glad I'm not too old next year because these guys are coming yeah. up to the under 19 And I remember <laughs> James. Uh, I remember James winning the semi-final against uh, Alberto Monzo uh, <laughs> the day before. He and was that, so that guy, that guy was unbeatable. Uh, I remember, you know, when we were kids. And, yeah. Uh, and when we played that match, the, that final, I remember being. Uh, no, you were too low up, and I came back, and then Just you had too up, much ball. You had you had too much ball at eight six. Oh. And I and I won ten eight or something. I was English uh, that, scoring still in those yeah, days. Yeah, ten yeah. eight and a bit. And then and then when we finished the match, you you came to the back of the court. I remember. Yeah, what there was, was all that? What was I doing there? What and you 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 took me back back to the court yeah. and uh, to give applause, you know. And uh, yeah. And there was a crazy standing ovation. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it was great court. Yeah, I, mean, I, did, court was I didn't great. know what uh, dancing was at that, that time. But, uh. <laughs> yeah, they kind of ruined that court when they made it into a glass court, but it was great with all the crowd. Yeah, the I love, amazing. You I love that it, court yeah. with the, the, yeah. uh, the seating. Uh, like, uh, it was yeah. really, really good. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. and, uh, and it's nice to see our generation to, to have been that strong, you know. Uh, you know, so many guys uh, became uh, number one uh, in the world or world champion or like win, uh, winning the British Open or so many events, you know. So it's, it's nice to, to, to have been in a generation that, uh, that could have played like uh, <coughs> at such a level afterwards. And uh, yeah, it, it's, it's good to have like history, like uh, all those matches that uh, either that you win or you, you lose, but all these rivalries that we had and, uh, and afterwards, you know, we... We're gonna have a story to tell, you know, and it's 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 nice, and and we respect. I think there's a even more respect now that uh, you respect uh, what uh, what every one of us uh, have uh, achieved, you know. Uh, of course, there was a lot of like there was up and downs, and sometimes there was a little clash here and there, but uh, you know, there's a there's a big respect, you know, uh, 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 after all this, you know. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, I looked through the record books of that the other day and there was one guy who, I was in the under-19s with Bengi, you guys were in the under-17s. There was one guy who won the under-13s that year called Rami Ashur. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> God, yeah. We can talk a little bit about him uh, <clears throat> later because we're going to watch some of the rally. PSA have been doing the rallies of the decade and Greg, you and Rami, your rally from TOC 2013 got voted the rally of the decade. But what was it like 
playing him, he was obviously one of the players in that generation that you just spoke about. He was pretty uh, different, shall we say? Yeah, he was uh, kind of, yeah, kind of uh, tough to play him because he never seemed tired. You know, uh, he never seemed to uh, like uh, bend his chest. You know, he never really showed sign. You know, so he was tough, tough to guess. Uh, uh when he when uh, when he was uh, getting tired and uh, and also like to uh to 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 monopolize the 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 tea you know was difficult because he was volleying so much and uh, you know he has arms you know like he can he can make his shoelaces without bending his bending <laughs> so he, he can touch the side he can touch the side wall going like that so <laughs> Look, we have to deal with him yeah, so that was, that was tough to really uh, pass him, and he was, uh, yeah, that was James, unbelievable. James had a reach on him. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so he was, uh, and his uh, anticipation and speed, and of course, you know, his, like, his touch, you know, he, he brought, uh, like, a new new game, you know, so he was, uh, we had to, we had to adapt to, uh, to those kind of yeah, players yeah. And, and game, you know, so... Uh, you know, we played with like the Peter Nicol uh, power, and then with Shabana, and then uh, uh, and then uh, we play against each other, and then there was Rami coming, and then Shorbagi. So we had to adapt to all the, those players, which was which was nice, I think. You know. Yeah, it's, that's amazing when you say all those names, though, because it just shows the generation of players that you know everyone's played against, which is. And, and we didn't have to stick to one kind of game. You know, there's. Uh, you know, you have to adapt constantly, you know, yeah. which is uh, which is nice. Yeah, no, I, th I think, yeah, I mean, he, it was just the sort of difference that he brought, wasn't it? I mean, all of you are, you know, I've got, I've got massive respect for all you guys, all the players. You can talk about having amazing games in certain ways, but I think with him, it was just, you, when he came along, it was, I just didn't, I've never sort of felt anything like it. You can You can kind of understand and analyse and work it, and trying to beat most players and, and have it have a plan to try and sort of you know get get to them but it with him it was just such a surprise the way he was playing the anticipation was such a shock and I think that was the sort of thing that was so unique about him um you use that word anticipation and for all the shot making and the brilliance it was that I think as well above anything else he just sort of anticipated everything you did um, so every shot just had to be so precise, and you know it was. It, I do I do remember the time he started playing and playing on the tour. I think it was that that made him so different. It was just it was just something that I think a lot of us had never seen before or, or felt like we were playing that against that before. And I think every player used to watch him. You could see everyone sort of gathering outside, and it's no disrespect to any of the other people in that generation. You know, it's a fantastic group of players, but. I think it was the difference that he brought that was just a bit, a bit of a shock, really, to us, maybe. Jimbo, on, on that game that's on YouTube, of you playing at Hull in the uh, British Open against him, and, and it's like, yeah. tagline is like the best game of squash ever played. And then like, <laughs> click on it, and you're just like, yeah. can't see the ball, it's freezing. Oh. Like, oh, no, like, no. I mean, it was, do you remember that? Oh, totally, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, I, I love it. I laugh at it and watch it, and, and I'm, I'm in awe of it, obviously, looking back on it, but it's... It's incredible. Um, it was a freaking nightmare for me. I mean, I was, yeah. I'd was i come off, I think, at midnight the night before against yeah. Pili on the Holland uh, Friday <laughs> squash club. <laughs> you know, hardly move. Um, you know, I was absolutely shattered. So my body wasn't moving quickly <laughs> to what it probably could be anyway, but th there wasn't any question. None of that mattered. He just had this ridiculous spell of squash. And yeah. um, you've just got to applaud it, haven't you? And it was, yeah. it was, uh, it was a tremendous display. So yeah, no, no, I have a little giggle at it, really. You should have count as one point for me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. So I've got a little quiz for you now. I'm not still in Daryl's quiz thunder. Sorry about that, Daz. <laughs> um, <laughs> it's called knowing me and uh, knowing you. Sorry, mate. Sorry. Knowing I'm me, doing the quiz. knowing you. Uh huh. <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, actor, I think amongst us. So. When I looked through the stats, it was uncanny. It was amazing how similar your career stats had been. You know, amazing achievements, 20-year pro career, both of you. So how well do you know yourself versus your opponent? Okay, so for example, which one of you has 
79 tour finals might be a question and you have to say it's either me or him i don't know where you are on the screen so you can point to the other person where he is on your screen okay oh, so we just point uh, okay like that, oh, like that okay okay so i think you knew that was you that one greg didn't you all right i'll start with one that there's a big difference all right okay. the height was slightly different five foot nine was that on a good day greg <laughs> <laughs> that himself. Three. That was the one difference. Five, nine, six, three. Okay, let's go. TOC champion twenty ten. Jimbo. Yeah. Okay. Qatar Classic twenty eleven. Twenty uh, eleven. Me. Oh, you beat me. You beat me in that as well. Because <laughs> I know James um, won won one, but uh, it was before. Head to head, fifteen thirteen to who? PSA head to head. Oh, just snuck it. Just snuck it, Greg. You're right so far. Win percentage in PSA seventy percent. Mm, seventy percent. Seventy <laughs> percent. James. James. Yeah, Greg's got seventy-seven. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's quite high, isn't it? <laughs> tour Come titles. On. Tour titles. Twenty-one. James. Yeah, me. Are we saying this? A point in. Yeah, either way. Either way. All right, me. Yeah, me. Flexi quiz. <laughs> Over 180 caps for your country. Greg. Greg. Uh, the answer be both. Both, Daryl, well done. Both. both. Okay, oh, nice, that was nice. A question there. That was a tough one. <laughs> that was a tough one. That was a tough one. And Munster's world number one, 20. Uh, me, yeah. Greg, yeah, 20. You both had a good one there. James was 11, I think. Greg was 20. So, some just anyway, you didn't even know all of them. Daryl had to help, help you out there on one yeah. of them. It was the Joker. <laughs> the Joker. <laughs> the Joker was, out. There, was there one? Lost you there, Daryl. Yeah. yeah, what Sorry, did you say? Did you say Greg had 40 titles? 40 tour titles, 79 finals, 40 tour titles. James. And, uh, sorry, from how many tournaments is that? I uh, haven't got that started. Oh, uh, PSA matches. He's got seven, two, eight. Did he have the tournaments there or not? Seven, six. Number of tournaments I've not got. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that is a hell of a lot of matches. Uh, you know, so cheap. James, four, seven, four wins. Greg, five, six, two wins. Over 180 caps for the country, world number one. For, I mean, they're they're, ama they're amazing stats, amazing career guys. But thought I'd try and trip you up there with a couple. Hopefully, you can both make 200 caps, and then uh, you'll know. Daryl, you must be above 100 as well. Pete Barker had the record, didn't he? 575 caps for England. He had. Pete. <laughs> <laughs> he loved it. Loved the cap. He's got the most. He's got the most quarterfinal appearances as well, hasn't he? He did, actually. He was very consistent. There was a stat that I liked about Pete. There was a year... You mentioned all those great players. And yeah. Shabana and Darwish and... Uh, it was myself in there, James, you two, Rami. And there was only one player for a three-year period that made every quarter-final or better, and that was Pete. Yeah. Oh, bloody hell. That's good. We, all had, we all had a loss or, you know, a first-round trip up, banana skin here and there, but... <laughs> he was the most consistent player for a few years. So, yeah, solid player. All right. Stick yeah. those stuff, did he? Okay, so <clears throat> this next bit, Nick's, um, Nick's got a few little rallies from the Rally of the Decade. Um, the first one's uh, James's one with, with Paul Cole, the infamous one, where... Um, Paul does some phenomenal dives. Um, I didn't actually realise, Jimbo, you were actually get dominated for most of this rally, um, apart from the last bit where you obviously had him going the wrong way a few times. Yeah. But, um, yeah, like, talk us through what you're thinking about. <laughs> yeah, no, well. was, uh, this, at this point, it's funny to look back, isn't it? So it's 2016. It's not 
playing, I don't think, where I am here. Is it playing? Uh, it's not playing right now. Oh, I can't see it. All right. Didn't work that time. That's weird. Got it? Yeah. Yeah. All righty. So this is from the Rally of Deco. I don't know where this finished up, what number, but um, this infamous rally with um, Paul number obviously six. diving everywhere. Number six. James had another entry, number four, with the triple fake. Uh, ah. His reaction at the end of this rally, so I wanted to see this one. You guys got it? Can you see it? Yeah. See it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, Daz, it was just, um, you know, I think the thing I was thinking in the match was just how I, didn't, I hadn't really known much. I mean, he trained at Pontefract a little bit at Paul, actually, so I, I knew him, obviously, and, but yeah. it, from the Commonwealth Games and stuff, but I hadn't sort of been aware of how quickly he was improving. Um, so, I yeah. mean, I was, I was ready and, like, up for it, like, you know, you have to be, like you always are, but I think at the, at the time, the only thing I was thinking was, bloody hell, like, I can't, actually get the ball um, to die against him. So it was, I just remember it being a tough, uh, tough little yeah, match. Yeah. I, just, I won the crucial points, but at the end of the game, so I managed to get the win three. Love, but it was, um, yeah, I think, so this was obviously the second game, yeah. I was just, it just, uh, oh, it gets up like that. I mean, you can, it's obvious it was a bit of a shock to me. I, I've not seen athleticism like that for a long time, and you know, it is pretty amazing. And I mean, the whole thing not a lot of it to do with me, <laughs> um, but I think the commentary is fantastic, isn't it? I mean, Joey and Drew Boy just make it brilliant as well, and I think that's half the thing, but. Just unbelievable what Paul he, did there. I mean, it, I famous, hope it. He had some famous last words there because he went, Paul Cole's not, you, I don't know if you heard him, but he said, Paul Cole's not even dived yet in this match. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And that was just perfect, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, just unbelievable. It, yeah, it was crazy. And you could see the reaction on the front row. And obviously at the time, I could, I could recognize what an amazing rally it was because of that reaction and just what could not believe at? that he'd. What were Sorry. you pointing at? Were you telling him where he was going to go the next rally? <laughs> yeah. so nice. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, couldn't you believe just can't believe he's got it. You're like, and that's like that, that must be done. Your rally with Castanet, wasn't it? Because your reaction was brilliant. About four days before your your one in Chicago, I'm pretty sure that was around, oh, the, same around the same time, time wasn't it? Yeah. Um, because Joey pointed it out, and yeah. Um, yeah. yeah, you just react. You can't believe it when something very very special like that happens. Um, and it's just so special. It's just yeah. so breathtaking. You just, you just can't believe what you're watching, really, and playing against them. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just uh, yeah, unbelievable stuff, really. Greg, your mm. turn. Yeah. Right, let's have a little look. This was voted Rally of the Decade. So, congratulations. Mm. Unfortunately, you didn't win this rally, though. <laughs> no. it. Dominated it, but didn't win it. I remember you in the uh, semis the day before, uh, so you're obviously playing well. Yeah, <laughs> no, it was a it was a good match. I remember I was two love up in that match, and I was like two points away from. Uh, it, it went to ten all in the in the third, and I, I started to be a little tired. So in that oh rally, goodness, there's a couple of times I I was just anticipating like that. And then yeah. uh, I came in, oh. into it and wanted to smash it as hard as possible. <laughs> <laughs> and you got the go go gadget arm, you know, <laughs> at the last second. And uh, yeah, that, that's kind of uh, impressive how he, he, could, he could still manage to control, uh, control the ball at, uh, at that pace. You know, the ball came, came quite that fast. Was you know? That was the first one, the second one was even more. So, yeah. I just anticipate uh, right now, and <laughs> oh, <laughs> uh, he managed to hold all these uh, <laughs> all these uh, uh, risks quite uh, yeah quite strong, you know, to uh, to be able to uh, to put that drop in, you know. Yeah, I love it. You threw your racket at it straight away after. Yeah, it was. Uh, yeah, I just couldn't believe. I thought it would be. Uh, he, he would put the ball uh, either on the floor or. Yeah, <laughs> it, makes, it does make the good rallies though. You need the reaction yeah. to the players. As well, right? like, that's that's what I like about those rallies. 
Oh, I mean, yeah. Joey's commentary as well is great. So he called Paul Cole was doing the jazz splits in your one. <laughs> I'm not sure what they are. And then he said Ramu is something out of Star Trek in your one. I don't know how he comes up with these things. Well, tell us about the triple fate, James, as well, because that was in there. Uh, is that something yeah. of practice in uh, a policy on the I know, doubles or doing your yeah. solos or... Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. You just, yeah, I mean, I, th I think um, uh, the way that Malt works, we're sort of always encouraged to express ourselves a bit, and it's all quite free, and the practices aren't pretty that rigid. So, I don't know. I don't. I don't specifically remember sort of practicing it. It just uh, you just you do these things a little bit when you're messing about, and I think it's good that it's good to mess about, isn't it? And practice sometimes, not always be totally serious. And um, I, I could probably got that from that ethos, really. That that. You know, we'll play a bit of doubles every now and then, and just just try and mess about and experiment. And um, yeah, it's certainly nothing that was I thought about particularly. It just yeah, just just sort of happens, and it's, it's really nice that people enjoyed it. Um, he does five yeah. takes in exhibitions against you, Daryl. You were saying? Yeah, he does way more than that. He's got like five or six in his locker. <laughs> <laughs> He does like two on the way down and then another like three or four on the way up. <laughs> I know. I get carried away now. Is it? Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. <laughs> Let me get ready now. He's got his goggles on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not the right way around. Yeah. <laughs> around that. <laughs> okay. The Quizmaster hat is on. Am I involved in this? Yeah, cool shot. Sure. You're in. You're so in. Don't worry. We need to uh, to <laughs> to <laughs> the buzzer. Where is the buzzer? No, there's no buzz. Don't need a buzzer. We need to guess. It's there's five questions. Five questions. Uh, the winner of each question is whoever gets it closest to the correct answer. Okay. Yeah, I've got I've got the buzzer to press. <laughs> Stop showing off your trophies. This right. is, um, I don't even know what this is. I think Charlotte, this is Charlotte's. <laughs> right, this is an example question. How many days does it take to swim the Mississippi River? What? How I many what? <laughs> days? Who, who though? Who, who's swimming it? Uh... <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, a, that's what I'm not prepared for. Questions like that, Jim, James, from you. Is it Michael um, Fox or is it David Walliams? <laughs> let's say, let's say a, a, a marathon swimmer. So someone that can actually swim properly, not me. Well, we all have a guess. Is it the closest? closest yeah, this point? is an example. So no, no pressure. How many days? The Mississippi River. Um, 14. How many? Fourteen. Anyone else? Uh, six. Anyone else? It's only on, Greg. Thirty. Yes, Greg wins highest. Uh, sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Yeah, sixty-eight. So they're going to be okay. Five crazy questions like that. So Greg would get a point for that. <coughs> Boy, it's unlucky. Ready? <laughs> First question of the proper quiz. Real how quiz. many letters? How many letters does the longest place name in the world have? Oh. Longest name? Yeah, the longest place name of a town uh, or city name. or village. The longest. Uh, so, how many letters in the name? Uh, Twenty-six. 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 Thirty-four. <laughs> <laughs> Jimbo, come on, give us this. How many? Thirty-eight. Jimbo takes it. I How many? How many is that? 85. 85. Oh, 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 oh. Yeah, that. Is that in Wales? Man, how, how many days does it does it take to to to, to say that? <laughs> I'm going to say it <laughs> that, for you. That name. <laughs> I'm going to say it for you. Ready? <laughs> Tau, Mata, Waka, Tangi, Hanga, Kawa, Yuta, Matiaturi, Bukaka, Piki, Moang. Wow. Where is it? In Finland? Where is it? No, <laughs> London. <laughs> <laughs> it's, in, it's in Paris. No, it's in, uh, it's in New Zealand. 
Oh, wow. it's, it's just, uh, it's where Paul was born, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I want to, uh, but he just changed it to something else so that Joey didn't have to pronounce it. Okay, Jimbo's 1-0 up. Okay, next one. How many different countries competed at the 2018 Winter Olympics? How many different countries? Uh, uh, so, Jimbo, you won the last one. You go first this time. Uh, okay. Um, uh, 68. 68. Good guess. Anyone else? Nick? Uh, yeah. 95. Okay, Greg? Mm, uh, 40. Nick, very close. Winner, 92. Oh, uh, yeah. Very good guess. Might, might have to ban you from this. I know you're I, good at that. You snitched Greg up here because he got the first one right and then he said that was just a practice. <laughs> right. No, you're right. You're right. Greg gets a point for the first one because it, it, it was a practice, but it was also serious. Um, and as you can what tell, this quiz is very serious. This. <laughs> one, one all. One all the way through. Okay, number three. Tokyo is the world's most populated city. How many inhabitants? Oh. In, in, in obviously in millions. How um, many what? Sorry. How, how, many, how many people live there in Tokyo? In Tokyo? Yeah. Uh... It's the world's most populated city, if that, <clears throat> if that helps your um, knowledge there, Greg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you love a bit of sushi, don't you? Yeah, how many sushis in Tokyo? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know that one. Uh, okay, so uh, don't try and work it out. Just guess. Fifteen. Yeah, yeah. Fifteen million. Imagine, imagine fifteen million. No, uh, I would say. Uh, That's too many, isn't it? Fifteen, actually, is it? No, it's not enough. <laughs> <I think that's laughs> L- London would be about one, wouldn't it? No, no, Sheffield on, one. Oh, is really? London's 12, if that helps. You, oh my yeah, God, I didn't uh, realise that. Uh, I, would say, I would say, I would say, uh, I would say 30, 30 million. People. 23. Yeah, Jimbo, I'm going to let you revise your guess as soon as you don't no, know. You've ha- no, you've helped me. It's absolutely useless, isn't it? Um, Can you revise it or not? I'll give you a chance. Definitely, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, all right. Um, I'll just go. Quite what did it? I just go. I'll go forty then. Forty million. <laughs> I knew you'd do that. <laughs> from, from one million uh, to one. forty. <laughs> <laughs> London's got about one, so it must be. Uh, what are you doing? Uh, what was I thinking? You can't give me that point. Thirty-seven million. You don't want it. Uh, well, whatever. You're, you're the quiz, quiz master. I'll, All right, I'll, give, I'll give you half. I'll give Greg, Greg half because he's technically right as well. What? So, yeah, one and a half. Jim. I love a half point. One and a half Jimbo, one and a half Greg, one Nick. Nick, you're last at the moment, but there's two questions left. Number four, how old is the world's oldest tortoise? Oh. Uh, they live a long time. How old? Um, Greg and Jimbo, you, you boys can go first. We'll let Nick go last this one. Uh, I'll say uh, 120. Years. Definitely older than that. 120 yeah. years. Yeah, I'll oh. go about 105. I'm going to go 350. <laughs> 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 50 years. Nick, I didn't hear that. What was that? 350. <laughs> oh, he's ruined it. <laughs> Can I revise my guess then? <laughs> What's the answer? <laughs> yeah, I mean, you, that's a ridiculous guess. It was bad as Jimbo's one. Go on, have a nice <laughs> time. That's <laughs> worse, isn't it? So, what's the result? No, I'm not having another one. <laughs> Come on, I'll give you another go. 80. 80? <laughs> You got to bring fifty to eighty. <laughs> James, it worked for James going on the extreme, so I've gone for that tactic. My word, um, hundred eighty-seven. Wow. Ah, yeah. I think so Greg wins point. that, didn't he? Greg, one twenty. I said. 
Yeah, but you were closest. Jimbo said 105, didn't you? Yeah. 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 Uh, so two and a half, Greg, one and a half, Jimbo, one for Nick. Question, okay. the last question counts for, counts for double or what? Yeah, the last question is two <laughs> points, actually, because it's, it's a squash question. Squash question to finish. All right. The heaviest squash in the world weighs how many kilograms? Maybe it's what? Yeah, the squash. The heaviest squash. squash. Squash squash. <laughs> <laughs> the heaviest squash player? No. <laughs> the heaviest as in butter, squash. Squash, butter as in squash and vegetable. See what I did there? Um, I didn't great. hear I didn't hear what you said. The heaviest okay, the, the heaviest the heaviest squash in the world, so ever made, as in the uh, the vegetable. The bit you know, the squash. Yeah. You know, nice. how, how, how many kilos? Not the heaviest uh, squash player. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but, uh, how many <laughs> kilos? Oh. I'll give you a clue. It's, it's a lot. It's a lot? Like, a lot. Okay, so... Uh, <laughs> That's <the> clue. <laughs> <laughs> it's not 350 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> Mate, no, you no. guess what you want. No, I'm Go on. uh, let's say... Uh, uh, 30? 30? 30 kilos. 30 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> about... I don't know. The heaviest in the world. You never know. 400 yeah, yeah, yeah. kilos. How much you going, Jimbo? 400. 400 kilos. <laughs> <laughs> four, Greg's loving four, it. Somewhere four times me. Somewhere in the middle. <laughs> go. What are you going, Nick? Somewhere in the middle. 150. You play oh. safe. You play safe, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> of course he has. He's, he's hedged his bets. Boys, you're never going to get it. It's 960 kilos. <laughs> no way. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think it's been gen genetically modified in some way, but it's 960 kilos. Oh. Jimbo. Oh. Well done. Double points. Great <laughs> guess for the last one. You've redeemed yourself after the uh, population question. Population, yeah. I'm going to go and learn some geography, I think. <laughs> that means James is the first winner of Bobby's quiz. He is yeah. the first winner of Bobby's quiz. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this regalia off now. But, um, boys, thank you. <laughs> A little bit of uh, randomness in there, but it's quite funny. Good. <laughs> Boys, it's been amazing to catch up. I know we've kept you slightly longer than we promised originally, but it's been so much fun to catch up with you. Um, we wish you all the best and we <laughs> hope to see you on a squash court soon. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks, Thanks for having us. Yeah, good luck. Good luck. Nice to catch up. Nice to see you, guys. Cheers, see you guys. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Cheers, boys. Thank you. Thank Bye. You. Bye. Bye. Well, what a great first episode. It was amazing to talk to both Greg and James. I could have listened to him a lot longer in the Squash Geek. I mean, not even being a Squash fan, just amazing to hear some of their experiences and could have talked to him all day. That's probably the most I've spoken to James, actually, in a long time. So it was, that, was, uh, that was nice to hear from him. And Greg's always, uh, he's always got some fun stories. Yeah, I mean, just to... Two amazing players, really, um, and just nice to to see them, you know, talk about their their matches and um, you know the rivalry they've had. Pretty amazing as well to remember that so so vividly. Um, but yeah, like just interesting what Greg was saying as well about, about rivalries, and, and you know you know this as well. Like to to play the way you have to play on a squash court, you got to be hard. You got to you know have have that sort of. Um, Will willingness to win, where you're trying to do everything you possibly can, but at the same time, you know, you know, you have to appreciate when there's when it's amazing squash and um, people enjoy watching that as well. So, no, just great to have those boys on, and um, yeah, I mean, hopefully they enjoyed enjoyed my quiz. Um, when, when, when we talk, when we talked as well, I was like, you were like, right, I'll do a section and you do a section. I was like, oh, great, yeah, quiz, that's fine, that's my my domain, and then bam. Well, yeah, I, I was a bit confused. I thought you said, like, you do a quiz. Well, no. 
Like, what? If I did, how have you... I don't know. Moving you on. You need Moving to change on. it for next week, though. I'll change it for next week. I'll have a new segment. Talk, talking of which, we have got really... We've just got one guest next week. Very special guest. Keep an eye on our social media channels for more information about that. And we'll get this episode um, of ASAP. Been a fun, fun first episode. Send us in any feedback, any questions, anyone you'd like to see in the hot seats on the next episodes of Bobby and the Wolf. And we'll see you next time. Enjoyed it.